Exaunus Domini Sancti Pater, Omnipotens Eterna Deus, et mi credineri Sanctum Angelum, tuum de celis, qui custodiat fovea protegat, visited at predefended omnes habitationes in ova habitaculo, per Christum Domini Nostrum.
Dominum Simon Fetchy, De Omnibus or Theophile, Que Chapi Jesus Fatre Docere, Usque in Diam Que Principians Apostolics, Per Spiritum Sanctum Clos Elagir Assumptus Ans, Quibus attribuit et sepsum vivum post passionum, summum multis argumentis, per dias quadraginta parens eis, et loquens erregro dei, et conversions precepideis ad, iuros inimis ne desideret, sed expectarant promissionum patris, Quam odissis iniqui peros meum, quia Ioannes quidam baptizavi l'acqua, vos autem baptizat vini, Spiritus Santo, non vos multos hostias, igitur qui convenerum, entregabunt ambicentes, Domine si in tempereo, Resituas regnum Israel, dixit autem eis, non as vestrum non se tempera vel monumenta, que parte posuit in sua forestate, sed accepieti virtudem surveniente spiritus sancti in vos, et eritis mici testes in Jerusalem, Ad in omne Judea et Samaria, ad usque ultum terre, ad cum et dixis ad vividentibus inis, elevatus est ad nubes o chapire, ab oculis eorum, cum que intu eratur in celum, e intum ilum ace, Duo virias eterniux e illos in vestibus abis, qui ad dixerent virigale qui statis aspicientis in celum. Hic Iesus, qui assuntus est a vobis in celum, sic veniat, quem ad morum viristi seum eontum in celum.
Our readings for this external solemnity of the Ascension of our Lord, the epistles from the Acts of the Apostles. In the former book, O Theophilus, I spoke of all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day on which he was taken up after he had given commandments to the Holy Spirit to the Apostles, whom he had chosen. To them also he showed himself alive after his passion by many proofs, during forty days appearing to them and speaking of the kingdom of God. And while eating with them, he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, of which you have heard, said he, by my mouth, for John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days hence. They therefore, who had come together, began to ask him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? But he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses for me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the very ends of the earth. And when he had said this, he was lifted up before their eyes, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing up to heaven as he went, Behold, two men stood by them in white garments and said to them, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up to heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, shall come in the same way as you have seen him going up to heaven. And please stand for a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, Jesus appeared to the eleven disciples as they were at table, and he upbraided them for the lack of faith and hardness of heart, and that they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into the whole world and preach the gospel to every creature. 
He who believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he who does not believe shall be condemned. And these signs shall accompany those who believe. In my name they shall cast out demons, they shall speak in new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands upon the sick, and they shall get well. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sits at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the preaching by the signs that followed. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. Just a couple announcements. We're happy to report that our doors are now open to the public. The church will be open daily for private prayer from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. At this time, we are not yet permitted to have our masses open to the public. The latest updates can be found on our website, and we thank you for your heroic patience, devout understanding, and charity in this time. Our parish continues to rely on the generosity of our people. Your Sunday donation helps us continue our services at our parish and within our city. You can give online using our website or see the link in the video description. We thank you for your generosity and help during this time. Our Masses are offered one hour later for Monday, Memorial Day, and our parish office will be closed for Memorial Day. Today's Mass is being offered for blessings for Father Trenton Rauch for his ordination anniversary, as well as for health and blessings for Richard Pfister. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. So the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. My dear friends, today we are celebrating the external solemnity of the Ascension. Of course, if you tuned in or in, are in the dioceses where they do celebrate Ascension on Thursday, you would have been able to understand the beauty of the Feast of the Ascension. We are nine days from that Thursday until Pentecost, those nine days the Church's first novena. But here, this feast day, this Sunday between Ascension and Pentecost, we take again that Feast of the Ascension, being able to savor the great mystery. And so today I would like to savor that mystery of the Feast of the Ascension. There is a beautiful poem that is taken from the classic Pilgrim's Progress. It's the poem from which we get that beautiful Ascension hymn, The Head That Once Was Crowned With Thorns. The head that once was crowned with thorns shall now with glory shine. The heart that what broken was with scorns shall flow with life divine. It seems like for weeks, it was ages ago that we were preaching about the why of Christmas. We were in this church packed for midnight mass and we spoke about the why of Christmas. Why did Christ become man? Indeed, when we went across every liturgical feast since then, we spoke about why indeed our Lord became man. Whether it was Epiphany, or the baptism of our Lord, or Holy Thursday, or Good Friday, when we saw our Lord's passion and death, or Easter Sunday, seeing his resurrection, here we find ourselves to that answer of the why of Christmas, why Christ became man, why he walked upon us, why he manifested his glory, why he was baptized in the River Jordan, why he lived among us in obedience, why he healed the sick, why he was with his apostles on Holy Thursday, why he suffered on Good Friday, why he rose again on Easter. This mystery of the Ascension provides that answer, the why of Christmas. He returns to the Father. It is in the book of Hebrews, in the New Testament, that we find so much of the deep meaning for this Feast of the Ascension. Hebrews tells us, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, yet did not sin. But Christ came as the high priest of good things to come. He enters the more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is not of this creation. 
My dear friends, for this Feast of the Ascension, we savor the mystery of Christ returning to the Father, that for the first time, God, the second person of the Trinity, the Word become flesh, Jesus Christ takes our frail flesh and enters into heaven. He entered once for all, says the book of Hebrews, into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. We can imagine Christ entering into heaven with those glorious scars, those glorious wounds. Saint Bede the Venerable tells us that Christ brings before the Father his slain, wounded humanity. He bears in his body those glorious scars, so that when he pleads for us with the Father, he may always show the manner of death he endured for us. The mystery of the Ascension is the climax of the liturgical year because it is the end of that vast reflux of love whereby our Lord brings our humanity into heaven, brings our humanity united to his divinity before the Father, and shows the Father those glorious wounds which he bears upon his person and intercedes for us. The book of Hebrews continues, For if the blood of goats and bulls can sanctify those who are defiled, so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit, who offers himself unblemished to God. The book of Hebrews gives us the rich meaning of this mystery of the ascension because our divine Savior, the head that was once crowned with thorns, thorns is crowned with glory now. He enters not into a tabernacle made by human hands, but into the tabernacle that is the Holy of Holies, where we have that high priest who goes into that sanctuary and intercedes before us. And that, my dear friends, is the entire mystery of the Holy Mass, that at every Mass, Christ the priest, even though he borrows the lips of his frail priests on earth, even though he borrows my lips, and I pronounce those words, this is my body, it is Christ who transforms and is made present on our altar, and it is Christ who offers himself to the Father, showing those glorious wounds, entering into the Holy of Holies. Without this perfect high priest, none of us can hope to enter heaven. But you see, ascension is exactly that. It is about the hope that we can enter heaven. Ascension shows us that a desire for home can reach its fulfillment. Ascension gives us the promise of our home. How many times we've asked that question from the Baltimore Catechism. Why did God make you? I hope you have the answer memorized. Why did God make you? God made me to know him, to love him, and to serve him in this life, and to be happy with him forever in heaven. My dear friends, it is the last part of the answer to that question, why God made us. That is the why of Christmas. That is why Christ was born in our flesh. That is why Christ ascended the cross. That is why Christ trampled the grave in the glory of the resurrection. And that is why Christ takes our flesh before the Father and intercedes for us. We now can be confident that where our head is, the body soon will follow. And if Christ says, and if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. Yes, the letter to the Hebrews continues. But we see Jesus who is made a little lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. Now he is bringing many sons to glory. It was fitting for God, for whom and through whom all things exist to make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering. You see, our glorious high priest, whose head was crowned with thorns, a royal dem adorns that mighty victor's brow. He is bringing many sons to glory. By his own intercession, the very Godhead of our Lord Jesus Christ interceding that high priest that we too might spend eternity with him in heaven. 
This is why the Mass is so important, because at every Holy Mass, the veil is torn, the veil is torn, we're able to see into that sanctuary, the Holy of Holies, where Christ, the perfect priest, offers himself and makes intercession for us. John Paul II, on reflecting on this great feast of the Ascension, tells us that realize that the strength of Christ is greater than our weakness, realize that the strength of Christ is greater than the weakness of the whole world. Try to understand and share the joy that Mary experienced in knowing that her son has taken his place with the Father, whom he loved infinitely. And renew your faith today in the promise of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has gone to prepare a place for us so that he can come back again and take us to himself. Isn't that the whole meaning of the liturgical year? The promise of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has gone to prepare a place for us that he can come back and take us to himself. This is the why of the mystery of our redemption. So now what? In this time, as we wait in the upper room with Mary and the Apostles, we know that next Sunday we celebrate the great feast of Pentecost, where our Lord promises, I will not leave you orphans, I will send the Advocate. That Advocate will ennoble us. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, will empower us, will embolden us to live as Christian witnesses. In the end of today's Gospel, but they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs those signs that accompany the believers of Christ, that we can, even in this valley of tears, have the comfort of the Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit, who we can be sure will descend upon us because we have a high priest who stands before us interceding that the Advocate comes to us. And so in these final days before the great feast of Pentecost, let us join our prayers to our great high priest who stands in his heavenly sanctuary, interceding with his glorious wounds, asking that the promise of the Father would embolden those of his body, the Church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Oh, me.